Welcome back, boys and girls. Today's read aloud is I Am Sacagawea. This is by Brad Meltzer. This is similar to the I Am Jackie Robinson book, where it has kind of like a comic strip effect in it, and I hope you enjoy. I Am Sacagawea by Brad Meltzer, illustrated by Christopher Eliopoulos. I Am Sacagawea. What do people expect of you? Your family, your teachers, your friends? Do they expect you to be a good person? To do well in school? To keep your room clean? People had different expectations of me. In fact, they didn't expect much at all. Why? It was a different time in America. Back then, they didn't think much of people who looked like me. Someone who was a girl? Someone who was young? someone who was Native American. When I was born, the United States was still a brand new country. George Washington was just becoming president. But my people, my tribe, which was called the Shoshone, had already lived here for thousands of years. When winter came, the women of our village would pack up our lodges our homes made of brush we lived in during certain times of the year. In spring and summer, the whole village would move to an area where there was better fishing. In fall or winter, we moved to different areas for different food. This is my father. He was chief of our village. And this is my brother. We lived in what is now called Idaho. The United States was so young that Idaho didn't exist yet. The snow is arriving. It is time to move on. When I was around 12 years old, our Shoshone tribe was attacked by another tribe. They captured me and took me back to their village. From there, I was given to a French Canadian man and became his wife. That's when I was given the name you know me by, Sacagawea. So no one knows her real name? That's right. And she was only 14 when she married? That's how life was back then. War captives were treated like property, something that could be given away. But lucky for me. My life was about to change. I'm Meriwether Lewis. I'm William Clark. We're explorers and we need an interpreter. Someone who can help us speak to other Native American tribes, like the Hidatsa and Shoshone. I speak Hidatsa. My wife speaks Shoshone. At the time, I was pregnant. When the baby came, it would be hard to travel. But I didn't have a choice. That's how things were back then. Besides, Lewis and Clark had a mission. A mission from President Thomas Jefferson. Today, the United States looks like this. Back then, the U.S. only had 17 states, only the blue part. Thomas Jefferson had just made a deal called the Louisiana Purchase, where he bought the big yellow part in the middle from France. The whole area had never been explored by the U.S. government. There were so many mountains, we didn't know if we could even get through. So our goal was to examine the land, open trade relations with the Native Americans, and find a safe path from here to the Pacific Ocean. But the only way to make it happen was with a translator who could help speak to the Native Americans who were already living there. It was harder than you think. To talk to a Native American, I would translate what they said into Hidatsa, a tribal language that my husband spoke. Then, since he didn't speak English, he would translate the Hidatsa into French. Then, a member of the team would translate the French into English for Captains Lewis and Clark. What did he say? He wishes you harmony on your journey. By the time we were ready to leave, my son was born. Clark gave him the nickname Pomp after a Roman general. It was meant as a joke, like calling a child commander. Was it dangerous to take a newborn baby into the wilderness? Of course it was, but we didn't have a choice. 
I wasn't even considered an equal part of the team. That's how things were back then. In April 1805, the Corps of Discovery set out from my village to explore this great uncharted land. Lewis and Clark thought it would be a one-year trip. They had no idea what they were getting into. There were a few dozen men. I was the only girl, the only female teenager, the only one with a baby, and the only Native American. Today, people say I was a guide, but my real job was an interpreter. Soon enough, though, Lewis and Clark realized I had many other skills. My people lived on this land. I knew its secrets. With a sharp stick, I'd find wild artichokes that mice had buried in the ground. I'm hungry. There's nothing to eat out here. Wait, the girl, why is she pointing? She's saying these roots and fruits are safe. We can eat them. We can eat these too? Look at these berries she found. These are amazing. It wasn't just food though. This was my land. My people lived here for centuries. I understood its passageways. Which turn should we take? She says that one. How does she know? She recognizes that mountain, the one that looks like a beaver's head. That means her tribe's been here before. This is the right path. In their journals, Lewis and Clark spelled my name eight different ways. Sacagawea, 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 and Sacagawea. Sometimes they called me snake woman or bird woman, but over time they learned exactly who I was. One day during a sudden storm, my husband lost control of our boat. The vessel nearly flipped. The men panicked and fought. No, our supplies, our medicine and papers. The supplies, they're floating away. In the middle of this pioneering journey, our supplies, which could not be replaced and were needed for our survival, were about to be lost. Someone help us! Hurry, do something! Stop panicking! Careful, you're gonna tip the boat! Only one person stayed calm. Carefully balancing myself with my infant son strapped to my back in a boat that was about to flip, I was the one who gathered all our supplies. That's right, it was I, a young girl surrounded by soldiers and frontiersmen who saved us all. I didn't wait for someone else to come to the rescue. I came to the rescue. You see what she's doing? Our instruments, our maps, she's actually getting them. And all the while, I also did my job as an interpreter, helping Lewis and Clark speak to other tribes. In Shoshone, we say you are not human until you learn your language. These are some of the real words from my tribe. There are no words for hello or goodbye. We don't want to say goodbye forever. So we say something that is closer to, I will see you later. For our expedition, the word bungu was one of the most important of all. If we wanted to cross the Rocky Mountains, we needed horses. Who had them? The Shoshone, my tribe. I led the way. Be careful, they might attack. I had no idea what to expect that day. It had been years since I was taken from my tribe. Our expedition had never seen a Shoshone war party. A battle could have started. But instead of fighting, both sides began to talk. 
Sometimes, even without words, you can communicate peace. Soon after, they invited us to meet their chief. That's when I saw my brother, my sister. It was wonderful to see my people again. We traded with them, giving them supplies and even a medallion from Thomas Jefferson. In return, they gave us horses, helping us prepare for our journey through the mountains. Eventually, though, it was time to leave. The next part of your trip will be difficult. You'll be going to places where you won't know the land. You'll meet tribes where you won't know the language. Lewis and Clark really don't even need you anymore. So may I ask, sister? Why are you going with them? Why not stay here with your family? To this day, no one knows the answer. Some say it was because we still had more to explore. Some say it was because I felt like I was a part of the team. Some even say I was inspired by the adventure. One thing was certain, the mission wasn't done. So, what would you do? The trip was never easy. We faced grizzly bears. We were hit by hail and flash floods. We ate candles to keep from starving. I even got extremely ill. She's sick. She's a fighter. That winter, our Corps of Discovery had to decide where to build our camp. Usually, that decision was made by the men in charge, but for once, the final decision rested with Lewis and Clark. But on that day, my vote was cast, like everyone else on the team. We'd like to know what you think. We need everyone to vote. Including me? Yes, Sacagawea, including you. Did our expedition ever reach the Pacific? Yes, it did. Part of our group hiked to the water earlier than the rest and sent word back. They say they saw a whale. I want to go. To see the whale? Not just the whale. I wanted to see the ocean, which I'd never seen before. Eventually, I did. In the end, our Corps of Discovery traveled over 2,000 miles. It took a year and a half by boat, horse, and foot. I was the only girl, the only teenager, the only one with a baby, and the only Native American. In my life, people underestimated me. Since I was a girl, they expected me to be weak. Since I was young, they expected me to be inexperienced. And since I was Native American, they expected to treat me unfairly. That's how things were back then. But that's not how they should ever be. Native American people define themselves by their stories. You know my story now. It's time for you to write your story. Don't let someone else limit you. As Chief Menonok of the Yakama tribe says, we can only be what we give ourselves power to be. At the end of the expedition, Sacagawea's husband was paid $533.30 and given 320 acres of land. As his wife, Sacagawea was paid nothing. That's not fair. Today, there are dozens of parks, landmarks, poems, songs, and even rivers named after her all across the country. Remember when she saved all the supplies during the expedition? When it happened, they named the river after her. Today in Montana, it's still called the Sacagawea River. She's the first Native American woman to have her own statue in the U.S. Capitol. She even got her own coin, the Sacagawea dollar. But since there are no pictures of her, the picture on the coin is of a woman from Sacagawea's tribe. 
Did she really make that whole trip with her baby? Look at the coin and the statue. Baby Pump is on both. Without Sacagawea's bravery and knowledge, the Lewis and Clark expedition might not have ever been completed. Thanks to her, they were able to create maps, engage other Native American cultures, and find a route to the Pacific. Do you know what it means to navigate something? It means finding your way. Wherever you go in life, whatever mountains you climb and challenges you face, find your own way. Make your own path. Shatter expectations. That's what I've always done. I am a girl. I am a teenager. I am a mother. I am Native American, and I am powerful. I am Sacagawea, and I will blaze my own trail. The Indian woman to whom I ascribe equal fortitude and resolution with any person on board at the time of the accident caught and preserved most of the light articles which were washed overboard. Meriwether Lewis, writing in his journal about Sacagawea after she saved the supplies on the famous boat ride. On these two pages are pictures and a timeline of Sacagawea's life. Take a moment to view both the pictures and the timeline to learn a little bit more. I hope you enjoyed our read aloud of I Am Sacagawea.